Men with diabetes are up to four times more likely to develop coronary heart disease than those without it, and women with diabetes are up to five times more likely to develop coronary heart disease. This chapter explores what diabetes is and why it increases the risk of a heart attack. It also explains how a healthy lifestyle and good treatment can substantially reduce that risk. Diabetes happens when the level of glucose, sugar, in the blood is too high because the body's method of converting it into energy isn't working properly. Normally, glucose is produced when our body digests starchy and sugary foods. The blood then carries glucose to the cells. A hormone called insulin helps the glucose to enter the cells where the body uses it. The insulin lets the cells take glucose out of the blood and then the amount of glucose left in the blood goes down. If your body doesn't produce enough insulin, then the cells become starved of glucose because they can't get it from the blood. At the same time, because the glucose can't get into the cells, the level of glucose in the blood goes up. This is diabetes, and there are two main types. Type 1 diabetes is when there is an insufficient amount of insulin produced. This type usually develops in children or young adults. The more common diabetes is what we call type 2 diabetes, and that's, we think, a product of several things. Uh, there's genetics, there's a strong family tendency, there's the Western way of life, um, that's unfortunately being sedentary, being overweight, eating the wrong foods, and there probably is an element of bad luck. <laughs> Tom was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes when he was admitted to hospital with a heart attack. My father and his two brothers had diabetes as well. So the doctors reckon that I, I could have had diabetes a couple of years before I had my heart attack. So that was one of the situations that could have brought on the heart condition. Diabetes seems to act in several ways to damage the heart. The high glucose levels in the blood can affect the walls of the arteries, making them more likely to fur up and become narrow. It also increases the damage done by the major coronary heart disease risk factors of smoking, high blood pressure and cholesterol. And people with type 2 diabetes often have raised cholesterol levels and are more likely to have high blood pressure. And it can affect the nerves of the heart so that symptoms of angina or a heart attack may not be felt in the usual way. There are plenty of things you can do besides taking medication to reduce the risks of developing coronary heart disease. Diabetes can actually be benefited by all the things we suggest in cardiac rehab. So exercise will maximise your uh, diabetes control. It will help you keep to a limit the medication you need. It will help with your um, cholesterol balance. It will help with your blood pressure. And it will also help prevent um, further problems from your diabetes in the future, including um, further heart problems. After a heart attack, it's important to control your blood glucose well, to keep you as healthy as possible and to reduce your risk of further problems. This may mean changing your usual diabetes treatment and perhaps using insulin. For Tom, making changes to his diet and increasing his exercise meant that after a year, the medication he was taking for his diabetes was reduced. I started off, when I left hospital, that was on insulin. But because I've lost the weight and I'm on good diet, I'm now on tablets to control the diabetes. As you start to build up your level of physical activity, monitor your blood glucose carefully because the dose of your medication may need to be altered. One of the things that exercise can do is make your body utilise your own insulin that you're producing um, more efficiently. So what can happen is that you've got better control, so your blood sugars may start to drop on a regular basis. Um, and that means that you might need to um, reduce the amount of insulin you're on. If you've had a heart attack and have diabetes, adopting a healthier lifestyle really can make a difference to your recovery and your future. Very often, something like a heart attack or angina developing, that patients will then realise the importance of these issues and how crucial it is to, to, to seriously say, right, I'm stopping smoking, to actually lose that weight, to actually eat healthily, to make those lifestyle changes we know make a difference, which is beyond any uh, drug therapy. 
that those things make a difference that can't be counted in terms of cholesterol levels. They actually make you live longer, they make you feel better, they make you basically fitter. And those things are absolutely crucial and fundamental to, to getting back to a normal and healthy life.